If on an exam you were given this molecule and the question might ask like uh, label any chiral centers right and then label them as r or s or star any carbon set uh, chiral center label them as r or s and is the molecule overall you know chiral well again a chiral center or chiral carbon usually carbon is usually bonded to four different substituents. So let's see, we have a bromine, we have a chlorine, we have a hydrogen that's in space, and we have this R group here. So this is definitely chiral. Here we have an OH group with a methyl group, uh, a hydrogen, and this R group here. So this is definitely chiral. So e, so let's d distinguish whether you know each one is R and S. Maybe you could pause this video and kind of use this as a practice into right so the first thing i do is usually ignore the rest of the molecule and look at what i am dealing with look at what exactly am i dealing with just focus on the chiral center in place so starting with this chiral carbon here right you could see that uh i have a uh a carbon that is bonded to an oh going away we have a methyl group like this right if her oh is going away a hydrogen has to be coming out at us in space and then we have this this chain here going to the c here right well notice that our lowest priority group is not going away from us so we got to somehow kind of flip this molecule and so here's my three-step process of flipping molecules and getting the right uh r s configuration so the first thing i do just look how many spaces my hydrogen has to jump to get to that uh, group that is away. So my hydrogen has to go jump one, two. So that means everything else has to move to place. So here's the deal. My hydrogen goes to place. So my hydrogen will be going away from me. Here's where it gets tricky. Immediately after you move that hydrogen, the the substituent or the, 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 the the thing that is uh, going away has to move immediately. So my hydrogen takes place of the OH, the OH has to move immediately. Well, the hydrogen moves two place, so the OH has to move two place also. So that means my OH will now be going away from me because, right, hydrogen, one, two, my OH, one, what, my OH, hydrogen, one, two, my OH, one, two, right? So after this step, you want to choose a branch point to be constant that never changes, right? So it doesn't matter, I could choose a CH3 here, or I could choose a C bonded to an H, and that is bonded to a chlorine or bromine, either way, right? So I'm gonna choose this, this CH, CL group here to be constant, right? This never changes, and then I just, I only have now one thing to rotate and move two places. And this, it's the CH, right? CH3, this methyl group here. So let's see. One, two, uh oh, this methyl group can't go there because I cho already chose this to be constant. So can it go here? No, because the OH now takes place of that hydrogen, so it has to stay in its place, right? So this CH3 has nowhere to go but to stay. All right, and then we just give our priorities, right? So oxygen is heavier than both these carbons, and then you could see as we go out, as we go out. We have a C, we have a C, go out one more, we have an H, we go out one more, we have an H, so we're still equal. Go out one more, we have an H, but we go out one more, we have a chlorine. All right, so this will take priority number two, and this is priority number three, obviously, because hydrogen is priority number four always, right? So let's look where our arrow goes. All right, so it's going in this direction, right? So that looks like it's going left. So therefore, this center will be labeled as S, all right? How about this one here? Well, again, if you look, I have a carbon that has a bromine going away, uh, a chlorine coming out as coming out at us in space. Uh, so hydrogen is probably here. And again, this has an R group, and the first thing we hit is a CH, right? So which one will get priority? Number one. Well, bromine is every that carbon, both carbon and chlorine. So bromine will be priority number one. Chlorine will be part of number two because it's heavier than carbon. So obviously the CHOH group here will be priority number three. All right. And again, notice our, our lowest priority group is not going away from us. So 
flipping this molecule I have a carbon notice my hydrogen will be moving one place so my hydrogen will now go here and the rule is once you move your hydrogen to the to the, to the dash to the dash position that atom that's already that's that was there has to move immediately so if my hydrogen moves to the bromine spot my bromine has to move to the chlorine spot so now I have my bromine here. Now remember, after you do do that little nifty trick, now you want to count. You now you want to keep one of those substituent constant, right? And in this case, I'm gonna choose a CHOH. I'm gonna choose this to be constant, and the only thing I have left to rotate is this chlorine in which uh, we did not rotate at all, right? So let's see this chlorine. Everything move one place, right? This hydrogen, one. This bromine move one, right? So therefore, uh, this, uh, uh, therefore this uh, chlorine group here has to move one also. Let's so let's see, chlorine one. Uh oh, we already choose this to be constant, right? Right. So let's see, it can't stay there, so it has to move here. Well, nothing is here, right? Because remember, the hydrogen vacated, so this chlorine has to be here. Right, could not take this person's spot because this was held constant. And let's give our priority, uh, uh, let's give our priority groups. So again, bromine gets one, chlorine gets two, this gets three, hydrogen gets four as always. And let's see where our go. So this goes to one, to two, to three, and this is going this way. So this, in fact, is also S. Now here's a simpler way of doing things, and you could do this on an exam to double check yourself if you're if you're second guessing yourself uh, without without doing any flipping at all. Now here's what you could do: you could uh, give the priorities. You could give the priority groups. Uh, so for this first carbon here, what you, what you could actually do is that you don't even have to do any flipping. So this for this first chiral carbon here is this right so i without doing any flipping all you could do is just label your priority group so this always this will be one we already agree that this will be two and this method group here will be three right so just draw draw your cow uh cow like how it is right and then just go draw the arrows going from lowest to highest so this is going right right so no no notice that this is going r but because our lowest priority group is not going away from us it's not going away from us you got to take the, the uh, i guess kind of reciprocal of that so if it's going r then it has to be going s so this will be a configuration for this one because again since our lowest priority group is not going away from us the hydrogen then we just draw the arrows like they is and if they're going right you, you take the opposite of that if it's going left you take the opposite of that and it's the same thing uh with this one right we had a carbon that was bonded to a chlorine and a bromine going away and a hydrogen here. And we have this C group here. It doesn't really matter. We, we don't really have to draw this out because we already know that uh, bromine is one, chlorine is two. So therefore this has to be three and right? hydrogen has to be four. I could just draw my arrows. If you do not want to do all that flipping, draw the arrows and this is a little trick. Notice that this is going right. But because our lowest priority group is not going away from us, we got to take the opposite of that, which is just S. And this is exactly what is seen with what we just did. So let's move on to something different. How about this compound here? What if on an exam you're given this compound and, you know, it was asked to uh, star any asymmetric carbon. But before we go to that, let's see, if this is this molecule chiral overall? The last question that we need to answer. So you want to just find any place of symmetry and kind of draw a line through it. This is how you define if compounds are really chiral or not. Notice that when you split this molecule in half, you, you do not get the same thing. So you get a chlorine and bromine over here and an alcohol group here and a methyl group here. So this molecule is overall chiral because it has no symmetry. Let's move on. How about this molecule, right? Are there any chiral centers? Well, sure they are, right? This is a chiral center here. We have a carbon that's bonded to a bromine, a hydrogen, this R group here, and a different R group here, right? And you could also think of this as being chiral, right? 
uh, you could also think of this as being chiral, right? Because again, uh, again, we have a carbon that's bonded to four different things, right? So, can we label RS? Sure. Is it needed? No. And the reason why is because these compounds are special, right? What if I were about to draw a line through the middle of this compound here? Do you see that when I draw a line through the middle of this compound, it is kind of acts as a symmetry. You see that I get two equal halves of this, halves of this molecule. And these are what we call meso compounds. All right, these molecules have multiple chiral centers, but they are superimposable images of one of each other. So on an exam, you might be given this compound and they'll ask you, well, how many enantiomers of this compound? And think, think of it. And the answer will be zero, right? There, there are no enantiomers of this compound because again, meso compounds are defined as compounds that are superimposable. Even though they have multiple chiral centers, they are superimposable on each other. All right, so these are what we call meso compounds. What about this one? Well, this is the same thing. You could imagine me drawing a line uh, through this molecule like this, right? And notice I get two equal halves of the same thing. I get a chlorine going away, a CH coming out of us, CH coming out of us, the chlorine is going away. This is also called a meso compound. All right, so that's the difference between meso compounds and enantiomers, right? And, and sure, these have multiple chiral centers as well, right? This, this compound has multiple chiral centers as well, but it's superimposable on each other. 